In the previous lecture, we proved if G is non-separable, then any two points U and V are on a common cycle. Let's try to form another chain of conditionals. So let's start by supposing G is a connected graph where any two points U and V are on a common cycle. What if we have a point U and an edge VW? Since any two points are on a common cycle, there is some cycle C that includes U and V. Now suppose this cycle also includes W. Then the cycle must go from U to V along some path, from V to W along some path, and from W to U along some path, or some permutation of this. But since there's an edge that joins V and W, we can take a shortcut and produce a cycle that includes the edge. Now, suppose W is not on the cycle that includes U and V. Because the graph is connected, there must be a path from U to W that does not pass through V, and that's because if every path from U to W passes through V, it would be impossible to form a cycle containing U and W. So again, we have part of our cycle from U to V, and the remaining part of the cycle from V back to U, and the path from U to W might have points in common with these paths, but there's going to be a last common point U prime, which we'll assume is on P2. So let's take the path from U prime to W, and it has to have no points in common with the cycle containing U and V. Remember, U prime was the last point in common with the cycle. And so we can form a cycle by taking the path from U to V, taking the edge from V to W, taking the path from W to U prime, and then taking the remaining part of our cycle back to U. And this gives us a theorem. Suppose G is a connected graph. If every pair of points is on a common cycle, then any point and edge will be on a common cycle. To continue our chain, let's suppose G is connected and any point and edge are on a common cycle. What if we have two edges? Suppose our edges are those between vertices U and V and that between vertices R and S. Then vertex U and the edge are on a common cycle. If V is also on this cycle, we can use the UV shortcut to produce a cycle that includes both edges. Otherwise, we can find a path from V to R that does not pass through S. Here, because any point and any edge must be on a common cycle, we can just use the part of the cycle that does not include S. So again, we're assuming that any point and edge are on a common cycle, so there's a cycle that contains U and the edge RS. And again, we don't know what this cycle looks like, and it might cross this path. Let V prime be the first point this path has in common with the cycle including U and the edge RS. Then we can form the cycle from U to V along the edge, from V to V prime going through no points on the cycle, and from V prime to the edge, SR, back home to U. And so suppose G is a connected graph. If any point and edge is on a common cycle, then any pair of edges is also on a common cycle. Let's take stock. So far we've considered two points, a point and an edge, and two edges. And in each case we have two things. What if we have three things? Let's consider two points U, V, and an edge between two vertices R, S. So again, begin where we end. Suppose G is a connected graph where every pair of edges is on a common cycle. Now, since each point can be used as one vertex of an edge, we have two edges, which must be on a common cycle. So that means any two points are on a common cycle, 
But remember that in a connected graph, if any two points are on a common cycle, then any point and edge will be on a common cycle. And so there's a cycle containing the point U and the edge RS. If V is on this cycle, then there's a path from U to V that uses the edge. And if not, there's a cycle containing V and the edge RS. And as before, if U is on this cycle, we can find a path that uses the edge. So, suppose U and V are on different cycles. We can follow the path from U to V prime, the first point that is on the cycle that includes V at the edge RS, from V prime to the edge along the cycle including V, across the edge, and then back to V along the path that can't include any vertices between U and V prime. And so, suppose G is a connected graph. If any two edges are on a common cycle, then, given two points at an edge, there is a path between the two points using the edge. And notice we've switched from cycles to paths. So what if we have three points? So again, begin where we ended. Suppose G is a connected graph where given any two points at an edge, there is a path between the two points that uses the edge. Since any point in a connected graph is incident on some edge, we can take any of these points and form an edge. There is a path between the points that uses the edge. So there's a path that passes through all three points, and whichever point is on the edge will be between the other two. And so suppose she has a connected graph. If, given any two points at an edge, there is a path between the two points using the edge, then, given any three points, there is a path from one to the other passing through the third. Now suppose that in a connected graph G, given any three points, there is a path between any two passing through the third. So given three points U, V, and W, we have a path from U to W passing through V, So there's a path from U to V that avoids W. So in a connected graph, if, given any three points, there is a path between two that passes through the third, then there's a path between two that does not pass through the third. But if we can always find a path between two points that bypasses any third point, then we have no cut points. And so this takes us home, Suppose G is a connected graph. If, given three points, there is a path between two that does not pass through the third, then G is non-separable. Now, our conditional chain means that any one of these statements implies all the others for a connected graph G. G is non-separable, which tells us that any two points are on a common cycle, which tells us that any point and edge of G are on a common cycle, which tells us that any two edges are on a common cycle, which tells us that given two points and an edge, there's a path between the points using the edge, which tells us that given any three points, there's a path between two that passes through the third, which tells us that there's a path between two that does not pass through the third, which tells us that G is non-separable.